What's going on, y'all? Okay, first of all, let me just say this. <laughs> it's November 4th tomorrow. By the time this get up, you know, whenever you see it, if you see it on Tuesday, it's going to be November 4th. Go out there if you're registered to go ahead and vote. Get the word out there to go and vote. Um, you know, I posted it on my site. I posted it on Instagram. I'm like, if you complain about shit and, you know, if you ain't go vote and do nothing, you ain't got no right to complain at this point. I'm just saying. So make sure you go do that. But, look, fuck that. Okay, not fuck that, but moving on. I don't give a fuck how long this video is because I got some shit to say. Before we get into love and hip hop, I know anybody who got an Instagram or Twitter or whatever the fuck, y'all probably heard about the shit that Chris Brown, it, it was like the battle of the motherfucking light skins and light breeze, okay? Everybody was in their motherfucking feelings. Chris Brown was on his period. Karuchi was coming behind him, you know, slapping it up and all that stuff. Like, baby, do you need a temp? I got you, you know, stuff like that. I'm just, <laughs> it, it was all fucking funny to me, but... It's childish, it's petty on all parts. And, you know, Chris Brown, I love me some Chris Brown. I support Chris Brown, but I'm one of the motherfuckers that say Chris Brown fucks up a lot of times, okay? And sometimes he do own that shit, okay? You was doing good, boo, until you opened up your motherfucking mouth and got on Instagram and posted that little so-called read that you want to call. I was like, who wrote that shit for him? Because one man writes like, girl, okay, I ain't gonna go that far, but, you know, it was just a little questionable you know going at adrian Balon and um I, I don't know if it was tamara or but i know it was tamar for sure about some shit that was said on the reel i guess today and i looked at the clip because we know they talk about shit all the time and some of that shit be late or whatever but i'm just sitting here like first of all if you actually looked at the clip when i looked at it you know, goes to show Chris Brown did not watch the actual clip. Somebody must have told him, oh, they mentioned you and um, Karuchi's, uh, you know, relationship on the show today or whatever. Did it need to be brought up on the show? Not really. They could have used somebody else in, as an example. But, but Tamar was actually defending him, okay? If anybody he should have went after was the little Asian girl, Jenny Mae, okay? Because she the one that called him the bad guy. You know, bitch, if he would have came after Lonnie, I would have fucking died. <laughs> I don't know why, but it ain't right. It ain't right, but I would have laughed so goddamn hard. But he went too fucking hard on them for no fucking reason. And I'm like, you know, you a public figure, okay? Just because, I mean, everybody got their opinions. And, you know, you got your opinions. They got their opinions. You a public figure. So, therefore, you out there for people to talk about and discuss, okay? That's what they do on these talk shows. I mean, how many times have Wendy Williams came at you? How many times have you clapped back at her like this? How many times has Charlemagne came at you and Karuchi, but yet you were sitting on the breakfast club at Powerhouse sitting there ain't saying a goddamn word. Bitch, you was all giddy giddy, you know, cool, cool, cool with them, okay? I'm just saying, you know, it was just, it was, it's, it's just crazy. It was just stupid. But, you know, Tamar got that ass. I will say that because, look, sometimes I do not be here for when Tamar clapped back. I be like, girl... Keep it on the mute because she be trying to read sometimes and it don't quite, it don't quite connect. But this time she went there and I was very much here for it. And, you know, I thought that was going to be it. But then Chris came back with some shit. She came back. I was like, y'all need to stop. Y'all need to stop. Just stop it. Karuchi wanted to say some shit. I was like, bitch, shut the fuck up. Talking about some, you know, I don't have time for this or I'm not even pressed by this and all this stuff and yada, yada, yada. But I'm sitting here like, if you wasn't, why would you post? a damn Instagram photo, just post a photo, okay, you put a whole essay as a paragraph, and Tamar, you know, she read him in a thesis statement, a whole dissertation, okay, I'm just sitting here like, bitch, who got time to read all this, but I read it, I laughed a little bit, you know, it was funny to me, Karuchi, y'all, y'all so wrong, we was just getting back to calling you actually Karuchi, you know, now they going back to calling you other names, okay, and, you know, y'all just really brought this up on yourselves. I just want all of them to shut the fuck up. Because technically, even though it wasn't called for at all, all of them are petty. All of them are childish. You know, it is what it is. But, you know, if you say something, just be prepared for motherfuckers to say something back. But don't post and delete, okay? Chris Brown took a number out of Tate My Boat and deleted the post. Like, girl, keep that shit up there. You put it out there, keep it up there. Then gonna post what Karuchi posted. Girl, what? She don't make sense either, okay? And it was just stupid. It was just all fucking stupid, y'all. Grow the fuck up. 
I mean, it gave me my laugh for the night, but you know, I don't look too deep in it. So what y'all, Tamar, she's finna go throw all the way, um, you know, erase all the Chris Brown music off y'all, um, iPods. That's if you actually went and brought it. He still got the money if you actually brought it, so it don't make no difference. But, um, uh, y'all's a goddamn lie. I'm still supporting Tamar. I'm still supporting, um, Chris Brown. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> it don't, it was all funny to me, so hey. You know, how you gonna get so butthurt over some shit that <laughs> you probably... Girl, Chris Brown, go take a nap. Go eat you. Go drink you some Hershey Squirrel or something. Go go do something. Hershey chocolate or whatever. Because you all in your light skin feelings tonight. Like, for real, for real. You know. Tell my you too old to be going back and forth. Stop that shit, you know. You said what you had to say. Don't respond. Nothing else. Vince, take the motherfucking phone. Put on punishment. Do what the fuck you got to. Because you proved your point. Because then this... You won that one. Okay? And y'all don't know Tell my yeah, we're going to move on. Love it, hip-hop, okay? Yes, y'all put that down up in the comments. Let's have fun with that, too. That sounds so fucking messy. Oh, yes, I saw Kate Michelle's shit. Will I be reviewing it? No, but I'd probably discuss it if I look at it before I look at the Love and Hip Hop. And I will be watching it because I actually like the show. Paris, that's my bitch. The bitch is fucking funny, Okay. K. Michelle, what some of y'all don't realize, I never said I did dislike K. Michelle. I didn't really like her. I, I It's neutral, okay? You know, I, I didn't like the album that she put out. It is what it is. But, you know, sometimes her attitude does too much for me. And, you know, it is what it is. But I can't I can't deny the fact that the bitch is funny as fuck. And let me tell you something. That maybe I should call that, and, and love them all. She is putting out some shit that I am vibing with this time around, okay? I just might, I'm, I'm, if the, if everything, I'm gonna listen to the samples of the, um, damn CD, and if it sounds good to my ears, I'm gonna actually go out and buy it this time, okay? I support what sounds good. I don't give a fuck. Anyway, moving on. So, Love and Hip Hop LA, uh, Hollywood, episode eight, Diss and Dismiss. We got Tierra Marie up in the studio with Young Bird. He trying to set the scene and the ambiance. He really think he finna get some ass from Tierra. Tierra like, bitch, please. We ain't got time for this shit. Okay, this ain't even what it is, all right? I came to hear the song. And then, you know, the song sound cute. He telling her what happened with Hazel. And, you know, he was storing it up in Hazel's face that he was working with Tierra and calling her her boo and a bae and all that stuff. And I'm like... Why would you do that? And some people got it fucked up in the last review, you know, thinking that we was defending Young Berg or one coming down his heart on Young Berg because of the shit that he did. Look, bitch, we ain't on Team Young Berg at this moment. We never been on Team Young Berg because he's a disgusting human being and a disgusting man, okay? But the fact of the matter is you only allow shit to happen to you for so much, okay? There are many, plenty of opportunities where Hazel could have got out of this situation, but she allowed herself to keep coming back. You can't tell me that this shit hasn't been going on for fucking eight years on and off, okay? That means sometimes they see each other, it happens, sometimes it don't. You can't tell me this shit ain't been going on all this time, and she just enjoyed this abusive-ass relationship. She used to it. I don't know what was going on in her childhood, but hey, I'm never going to defend Hazel and her dumbness. So, you know, because some of y'all is trying to go hard for I just can't. But anyway... You know, Tierra like, fuck that bitch. Meanwhile, Hazel in the gym with Masika telling her what happened with Young Berg and all that shit. Masika like, you know, fuck girl code. I'm like friend code or whatever. If I chill with you and all this shit, I'll chill with you. And I seen some shit with Young Berg and you know how the stuff, he, the women he be around and how he be doing people and all this stuff. You need to let that go. But, um, Hazel like, this bitch acting like... You know, she real buddy-buddy with uh, Young Berg. Like, she all up on his side. I'm wondering what the fuck is up. Bitch, you should have let that, you know, you should have just figured it out right then and there. Moving on. Fizz, meet up with Amanda. This tramp, bitch. Okay. Fizz, you trying to make something work. Let it the fuck go. All signs are there. Okay, what do you need? Those airplane people out there saying like, mm-mm, mm-mm, go this way, go this way. No. She, you caught the girl going to the restaurant with the boy that she cheated on your ass with. She is avoiding your calls. Ain't no talking. We over and done with. Amanda, you playing fucking games. I feel no sympathy for you. And bitch, you ain't that cute to be doing all this shit. Why is you hurting him like that? And, and Fizz, why is you letting this allow, why are you allowing this shit to happen? Girl, stop fucking playing. Fucking plan. He was like, then I'm done. I'm done. I don't, don't want to deal with it. Don't deal with it. Move the fuck on. She is not right for you. 
So, you know, Tierra Marie and Nikki, they all of a sudden besties and shit. Tierra go over to Nikki Kondo and, you know, she got the whole sushi out and all that shit. And Tierra tells her about what happened at the studio with Young Bird saying, you know, he had candlelights, he had flowers, he had all this shit. Nikki like, Young Bird trying to get that and you know it. Tierra was like, bitch, he may be trying to get that shit, but I'm not trying to get it, okay? I can be flirtatious, but baby, I'm all about my business this time around, and I don't want no relationship. I was like, keep that, keep that, keep that mind frame. Here go Nikki telling her about, you know, Masika and Molly Mile and how he was lying and all that shit. They're going to tell her. So, you know, my parents know the landlord, uh, you know, own the landlord or some shit. About the club that's opening up. And I want to just go over there and show some love. So I'm going to go over and, you know, see the grand opening and pop some bottles and look fly. You know, you can come with me with your titties all out and all that shit. Chee, chee, chee. Girl, when Nikki walks, she walks like her back hurts. She just walks so stiff. Like, if she just move one direction further, it's just going to all poof away. Okay? And that was that. You know, the fizz... He's looking at houses with Moniece. I said, what the fuck? Okay. You know, he was like, with all this shit that's going on with Amanda, all this time I'm thinking, hmm, well, I'm trying to find a mother for my child. Why don't I just go ahead and talk to the mother? I was like, yeah, okay, you know. We could have told you that. But, you know, you got to learn this shit on your own. And they trying to work shit out. And, you know, he's trying to get a place away from his mom or whatever, move out of his mama house. I'm like, hmm, first of all, I, what is your, Lil Fizz doing that he get money? Him getting royalty still from D2K, from You Got Served? Bitch, You Got Served was on the other day too, for real. Like, it was planned all day yesterday with Step Up Revolution. Why they keep making these Step Up movies, I don't understand. They're shitty, all right? They're fucking shitty. White boy from the dead hood. Like, uh, Anyway, we gon' we gon' we gon' we gon' we not going there. But you know, they getting along for the most part. They talking about you know his well being and all that shit. And then she was like, I don't want to talk about you know throw up in his face about him and Amanda. And I just don't want to say I told you so because that's none of my business. But bitch, I told you so. And I was like, uh huh, you told you so. But bitch, let me tell you something. This little thing talking about some you know. She want to have a third bedroom. That third bedroom can be hers. And, you know, she can come over anytime she wants to because that's her son and he's the she's the baby mom and all that shit. Bitch, it don't work that way, okay? It does not work that way. We ain't married. We ain't together like that. If you ask me, Monique still wants Lil Fizz. And um, I wouldn't be surprised by the end of this season that they fuck again okay because all that little flirtation activity that was going on and she was like we were fucking like wild animals we were fucking everywhere fizz and you know where fizz you love me i was like girl then talking about something she need 130 dollars just to finish the prototype to her hot dicks i said the prototype bitch you ain't even got the final product and you need 130 dollars thirty thousand dollars i should say and you asking fizz Bitch, Fizz was just living with his mama. Where he got $130,000? Moniz, stop playing. Youngberg and Masika are so fucking petty and so fucking messy. Masika is like, you know, she's one of those people that's going to be friends with both sides and who can't, you know, just not talk about the one side to the other okay she's gonna play both sides and it's pretty fucked up all right now it's cool to be friends with people that you know that ain't friends with somebody that you know or whatever but you gotta learn how to not you know discuss that business with that person so that you know you can stay the mutual neutral part party this bitch is like fuck hazel because at this point i've been missing my friend berg and i know him more and longer than I know Hazel, before I knew Hazel. So, therefore, I'm going to go hook up with him and see what's up and get his side of the story. He telling her, okay, yeah, what I did was petty. You know, I regret it. Bitch, you lying. Yes, it was fucking petty, but you don't, re you don't regret shit. You did the shit on purpose. She was like, you was calling Tiara your boo. He was like, look, I spend more time with her than anybody right now because we doing this record. And so, therefore, she my boo. And I said that shit to piss Hazel off. And I'm like, 
you petty, you childish, and all this shit. So he think just because he did all that shit for Tierra in the studio or whatever, that Tierra was going to spread them legs for him. And, like, you really think that you that motherfucking bad, you know, that a motherfucker just dropped these drawers for him. Bitch, please. Tierra ain't having that. You coming out desperate. You coming out delusional just like fucking Hazel, okay? That's just, uh, pathetic. Crazy is as crazy does. And, you know, she was like, <laughs> when Seeker was like, you know, she told me what you said about the record. Like, it was, it was horrible. It was a whack. It was this. It was that. Well, you heard the record. What do you think about it? I mean, I like the beat. I like the hook. I like all of this. But her verse was kind of like struggling. And it was just like trying to talk about your relationship and make it more than what it was. And I said, Masika, shut the fuck up. I mean, even though we all agree, but shut up. Because you it's like she was just agreeing with Young Berg at that time, you know. And she was like, hmm. I'm sitting here like, man, Masika does music, you know. She ain't no Beyonce. You got that right, bitch, okay. And, you know, maybe I can do some stuff with her. So, look, let me tell you this. You like the track. You like the record. Why don't you put your thing on it? And I said, Mona, y'all are just blatantly recycling fucking storylines. Love and Hip Hop New York. I think it was season two or season three. Whichever season it was that uh, Olivia, the last season Olivia was on, when um Olivia redid Erica Mina's song. And it is so, girl, what? What? Stop playing. And, you know, Masika was like, no. I don't want to do that in the confessional. All this time that we known each other, we never, you know, did any music or he never expressed interest like that. So maybe, you know, because Young Berg is a real producer, unlike Molly Moss, fake ass. And I was like, okay. He was like, so we got to make this real, you know, let's make a uh, Instagram photo. You messy as fuck. Y'all messy as fuck. And you know, both of y'all know exactly what y'all doing. And then, you know, this thing with Ray J and Princess, they going out eating it. You know, she was like, baby, is you good? You got to stop all this drinking because I want to be there for you. He was like, "What?" she was like, where you see us at? I see you by my side. I see you be the one that take me off the market. You know, the one that ride with me. The one that make me want to have my kids and, and, and marry me and all this shit. We can make a brand together. I was like, Shut up, Ray J. So, um, <clears throat> Amanda has the nerves to come over to Fizz's house and, you know, act as if everything is good. See, I ended all the relationship with old guy, you know, so we're all good. And I haven't heard from him in a while and I just, it just didn't sit well with me. So I'm going to see what's going on. Yo, so, you know, I'm still feeling the way that I felt, you know, when we last met. I'm I'm still not there with you right about now. You know, Monice came with me to look for some houses. Wait a minute, Monice came with you for what? She trying to move in? I mean, she did kind of mention that. Oh, so now the bitch want to move in? Oh, we ain't finna have that. The whole time Amanda was trying to get buck in her shit. I'm sitting here like, girl, you fucked up. It was like, Monice ain't finna come up on my man. You not finna do that. I said, oh, so now he your man. Now you claiming that motherfucker. All right. Fizz, cut that bitch loose. You can't trust the hoe, okay? Don't go back to your crazy baby mama. Go find somebody new. Build it with a good church girl or some shit like that. Because obviously these hoes, they're not working for you. I did not know the whole time Amanda was sitting there trying to get all up in her feelings with little Fizz. Her left eye was fucking sleep. Okay, that bitch was leaning. I did not know. Now, somebody mentioned that in the comments a couple of episodes ago. A couple of reviews ago. I didn't know what y'all was talking about. But now when she was in there, that bitch was just leaning. I said her left eye was asleep a little bit. It was drowsy. I did not know that. And I'm not going to go in because I had a little lazy eye when I was younger too. Still partly got it too. You know, that's because I ain't had no muscle on my eyelid. But I just really fucking noticed it. Like, bitch, what? You're not really that cute to be going in like that. Like, she a pretty girl, but come on, girl. Stop it. Fucking stop it. Hazel, you going over there to see Masika, you know, before she do her little, um, her opening for the little Ace of Diamond thing. And the way that she came up in that bitch like this, like she was walking with a purpose. I said, bitch, you can't even switch right. Okay, I can switch better than that. Fuck that. You know, she was like, first of all, before we get started, um, what's with these pictures of you and um, Young Bird? Y'all looking mighty close. Like, bitch, half those pictures are from way before I knew you. So, but they're just posted today. Like I said, 
half. I was like, Mystique could be checking these bitches on these words. Like, bitch, context. I said half, not all, not most, but half, okay? And I was like, all right, you know. And she basically telling her, Masika's whole objective was to tell her what happened at the, um, you know, meeting with Young Berg and how she was going to get the song or he offers her the song that Hazel did. She was like, fuck that shit. This bitch want to come up in here and, and, and talk about a fucking relationship that ain't even there. She was like, bitch, are you fucking mad because I took pictures with this motherfucker or because you ain't with this motherfucker no more? I said, damn, Masika. What type of these hoes was never really friends? Okay, when y'all can get into it and y'all just start throwing mud at each other, y'all been thinking this shit for a while. You been ready to say this and y'all ain't really been friends, okay? I'm convinced. And it was just fucking funny to me because Masika was like, bitch, you're fucking delusional. Tell me how I'm delusional. Tell me how... You, we gonna be here for a while if we list it all out for you and you still not gonna comprehend. We can get hooked on phonics, bitch, for you and you still not gonna comprehend, Hazel. Girl, just let it go. She literally looks like a deer caught in headlights. Oh my God, somebody went as a deer for Halloween and their makeup literally looks like Hazel Facts. No shade. I'm just not going to go there. But, Hazel, you're fucking dumb. You're fucking dumb. <laughs> like, that bitch is fucking dumb. <laughs> that's stupid. Bird is a, a lame-ass nigga that's want to take all this and you want to take this abuse from him. Like, girl, your priorities and your self-worth and your self-esteem must be low to the motherfucking ground because you just... Mm -mm. So, um, Amanda meet up with Moniece, right? <laughs> Amanda called Moniece. Wrong fucking move, bitch. Look, let me just tell you this. First of all, you don't fuck with a crazy baby mama. Moniece and I already told you and showed you that the bitch is fucking crazy. Like, she already cussed you out in y'all first meeting. You got the nerve to be upset at the fact that they house hunting for the kid, you know, and she making jokes and shit. So you've been making these slick remarks and then, you know, I find it very inappropriate that you're house hunting and talking about something you're going to stay in the third bedroom and like, girl, no, okay? You just don't. You're fucking delusional. You're crazy. Don't call me crazy. Don't call me delusional. I am crazy gonna keep on calling you that because that's what you are look what i think of this whole situation is you can't be with um drew until you're fully ready and you don't need to be around my son because basically when you break up with drew you're breaking up with my son too no it's not about you yes it is about my but but my ass okay we've broken up and been on breaks Thousands of times. Well, you broken up and been on breaks with my son thousands of times. I was like, okay, Ronis, I kind of feel what you're saying. I get where she coming from. And I'm like, girl, this what you should have known that was going to happen, um, Miss Amanda. You in a relationship with a man who's taking care of his son. He's actually got custody of his son. His son is the first priority. So, obviously, he feel close enough for you to be around his son. Yeah, some of them may not be looking for mothers or whatever. But kids, especially at that young age who don't see their parent, the other parent in the household or whatever all the time. And they see you more. They're going to get attached. So, therefore, you are dating the son. And you are dating the, um, the father at the same time, too. So, it is going to the sun. What Moniece was saying was not wrong. But bitch, you came at her kind of wrong. Like, girl, you tried to make it seem like you weren't scared. But you was. Because when Moniece pulled over and took that jacket off, you should have got your ass up because that was a warning. You don't know how to fight. Obviously, you never been in any fights or whatever. You never seen any real fights because when a bitch started taking her earrings off, that's one. Or when a bitch starts taking her jacket off or whatever and she's calm with it, but she's that seething calm, okay? The calm before the storm. Bitch, you should have got your ass up and ran, all right? You should have just walked away from the whole situation. But no, Moniece got up and grabbed the fuck out of your hair and put your face down into the table. And then they told her ass to get the fuck out. I was like, I hope they're going to give her her shit, <laughs> you know, because she walked out of there empty-handed. Throw her her jacket and her purse, okay? Okay. You know, then we get to... This unveiling of the Ace of Diamonds, the face of the Ace of Diamonds. Tierra Marie and Nikki comes there. Hazel sitting at the bar. She's sucking on that thing like her cricket ass lip. So, Masika is just showed that she's such a fried ass friend. You know, first she's trying to fuck around with Young Bird and then she's going to invite Tierra Marie up here knowing damn well I don't fuck with her no more. Okay, I got this, bitch. I said, first of all, pump your brakes, bitch, okay? 
Tierra Marie don't fuck with Masika like that, all right? Nikki, baby, bro, Masika, uh, um, Tierra there, or TT. So me and TT, we came to the sink and we're like, <laughs> that's them, okay? You know, I'm like, Hazel, sit the fuck down, okay? They unveil the thing and then they show that it was Masika. Here go Tierra. <gasps> girl, do you see this? I was like, girl, shut the fuck up. It was just so. It's nothing to even get mad over. It's just the whole episode was funny to me because it was just so fake. And then next week, you know, she gonna get mad. And then Ray J talking to his daddy. And you're like, yeah, you embarrassing the motherfucking family, bitch. In so many words, that's what he was saying. And, um, you know, it is what it is. Y'all tell me how y'all feel about everything that was spoken about in this video. And I will see y'all later. Peace.